I don't want to make claim of something when I haven't, you know, when it's not been scientifically validated or anything, but it's just unusual that we're seeing. I love this. This is the real science though, because you're asking questions. This is the real science. Asking questions, showing it, say, admitting you don't know for sure, but you're asking questions and figuring it out. Like this is the real science. It is, it is, because it's like, why are we seeing this? Why all of a sudden is this present when it's like, I haven't seen it before. Our conversation today is for the humans out there who have been injured by the C-jab with information about what's going on in their body and natural ways to heal. It's also evidence to show friends and family who keep getting the shot and the damage it's doing and why they should watch this before getting any more. This jab has already done so much damage such as myocarditis, pericarditis, strokes, aneurysms, heart attacks, miscarriages, stillbirths and an overall increase in death rates of Australians. But data showing this has been censored by the mainstream media. Not cool. North Queensland GP Melissa McCain has done thorough investigation into the adverse events and deaths caused by this jab. I love this because there's lots of information coming out from overseas, but we can sometimes not feel like it's relevant to us. So it's great to have fabulous Aussies proving and providing us with stats and data on Australians. In Melissa's correspondence with the TGA, they have admitted that several previously healthy young children died of the C vaccine-induced myocarditis. However, the TGA don't want to go public with these cases in order to keep the vaccine campaign going without vaccine hesitancy. Among, among a public who are witnessing countless injuries, disabilities and deaths with repeated injections. I'll put a link to Vanessa, Melissa's full talk below. It's really good. Jab Injuries Australia has 118,000 followers with over 400 stories on their website of people who have been injured or died from this vaccine. If you're suffering out there, you are not alone. The negative effects of this C-jab impacts our relationships and our ability to live a healthy whole life with the people we love. Today, we'll show you evidence of what the jab has, jab has done to the bodies of the injected, why you should stop taking them if you still are, and tools to help you detoxify for those who've been injured. Kathy has seen positive results from what she's doing in her practice and has only just got started on finding natural remedies to help those who have been injured. To walk us through this and more, I'm grateful to introduce Kathy, a qualified naturopath, medical herbalist and kinesiologist for over 20 years, working right here in South Australia, which is very exciting. In her previous life, she was a midwife and nurse, so she's able to see this from every angle, offering a holistic approach, which is very exciting. More than anything, Kathy is passionate and dedicated to the philosophy of natural healing, which is music to my soul. Kathy, welcome. Thank you, Benita. Thank you so much. It's wonderful um, to be here. Thank you for inviting me to share some of this stuff that I'm still trying to work out. <laughs> yes, that is true. So, so if from that intro to what was, that's what we're seeing, isn't it? Like we're seeing so much out there, but it's just not filtering to. It's Australia. not, it's not filtering through. And some, and other things I think that, um, <clears throat> and I think it's by design potentially. Um, I remember hearing at the beginning of all of this that, you know, the effects of this won't really be fully transparent, um, you know, for another two to five years. And we're heading into that sort of time zone now. And what I think what I'm seeing, you know, that and most people probably have heard the term coined now, turbo cancers, where they're just these massively aggressive um, cancers that that people are, are all of a sudden you know, healthy and then not great. Um, and and autoimmune, it, autoimmune diseases as well. So they yes. aside from all those other obvious things that we've been seeing, like you said, with the the cardiac problems and the clotting and the miscarriages and actual deformities if, if babies are surviving there are some I've, I've seen a couple that are quite deformed um so it's yeah there's there's 
It's a minefield. It really is. And it's heartbreaking. Yeah. A hundred percent. And um, you have been, you've got buds, blah, blah, blah. You've got blood slides to show us, but before you show us, can you, <clears throat> you know, tell us what got you curious to even start investigating? Um. Well, I guess it's it's just it's been a, a natural progression because I do live blood microscopy as part of my naturopathic um, appointment consulting. It's part it's part of the an assessment tool that I've used for a number of years now. I just started to see um, these strange things appearing, um, and it was a you know shortly after the whole. Um, vaccination campaign started unusual things that I wasn't familiar with and I didn't know how to find out like no one else seemed to know what these things are either and I had been searching and like looking at a lot of uh, scientists interviews on online and things like that trying to see if anyone else was was seeing this same phenomena um, and it turns out there are other people seeing this it's just I don't know it's not I think there's still investigations going on they're still trying to work out exactly what it is and I'll probably talk more about that as we go through the slides but it's just been a progression of seeing more and more of this it's it's almost become I'm surprised if I don't see it anymore yeah okay yeah. um and it's um yeah it's concerning mm. It, yeah, it's, yeah, there is there is lots of information out there, but it's not mainstream, so a lot of people miss it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is there's not a lot here, right here in Australia. No, no, very much. Um, there is there. I did see a while back, um, and and I again I did look him up, and perhaps tr- maybe I didn't try hard enough, but there was a a doctor, David Nixon, over on the east coast somewhere, who was being interviewed and showing he was he was actually breaking down and exploring the like he was putting the ingredients of the vaccine under the microscope and looking at actually what was in in it in it and that was phenomenal and i think he's also done some with blood um but again these people are hard to find because they're protecting themselves they're protecting their identity so it's not an easy to to potentially connect with them and say, hey, help me work this out. <laughs> but um, yeah, 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 it makes I, sense. I, I I personally have no doubt that it's a re- result of of what's been injected into people. Yeah, for sure. And um, bef- again, can you walk us through what these blood slides are? To you know, the, for us that don't <laughs> understand that, what what do you do <laughs> with your microscope and your blood? <laughs> Yeah, so generally I just take a tiny finger prick of um, someone and, and get a drop of blood. So it's capillary blood. It's not venous blood like when you would go and have a blood test done for a doctor. Um, so it's literally looking at what's getting through into the microcirculation of the, of the body. And, um, yeah, just put it on a glass slide and put it under the microscope and have a look at things. We can see the red blood cells, the white blood cells, um, macrophages, all aspects, the plasma, all aspects of of the blood, and um, then see also other things that aren't meant to be in there. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the way, so the nature of how things are, um, like sometimes you'll see nice healthy red blood cells you can tell when there's anemia if everything's clumping together then there, that gives us um, some indications of how internally the liver and the digestive system and and so forth are, are impacted the immune system so um, yeah it's 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 a general assessment tool yes yeah it is very I, I've um, had an appointment with Kathy and she's done my blood and it is so interesting to see it right there in real time getting it done on the spot see it and it's like wow yeah it's really interesting it is fascinating when you see yeah because as when it's under the microscope I I then transfer it onto a computer screen so that you can actually see and interact and we talk about what's going on 
um, in your in your blood and and what all the different things that I'm seeing actually mean, yeah. how it can relate back to um, yeah different different symptoms or health conditions and so forth. Yeah, and you can actually see if you've got parasites. You can see if you've got little bugs, can't you? And yeah. all of that. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, a lot of and, you gone here. Um, I actually am um, hoping to upgrade the camera that I have connected to my microscope so that I can act or work out some. I need some sort of computer person to help me um, to actually take videos because when you take a photo. Um, you don't necessarily get the full effect of a parasite. But when, if I was able to take a video of what we were seeing sometimes, um, yeah, it's, I've actually, at one point I took, I got my phone and videoed the, the computer screen because oh, I, yes. there was like a massive um, Plump. colony, a colony of parasites that were in this person's blood. It was, Oh, scary wow. it was I'd yes. never seen anything like it and so and I couldn't video it so yeah I, I got my phone and and yeah yes. I'm not sure if I can yes. share that today but um yeah there's there's a lot there's a lot that can be seen and sometimes a photo doesn't do it full justice but um I'll do my best to share some of it today yeah for sure for sure all right well then should we go into the the visual yeah. you're yeah. going to show us a like a healthy blood slide first just so we can wonderful idea yes <laughs> that helped me when I was there I was like hey what does yeah. it should it look like what is it looking like yeah that was really because most of us I, I I would I would think most of us haven't haven't seen... really seen it yeah yeah when you look at mine I'm like okay what like? <laughs> yes let me go into I'll open so bear with me because I'm a novice at this um, that one and because this is me doing a little bit of an experiment on myself oh cool um after I thought I'd been shedded on so <laughs> yes and we can talk about that afterwards so we're going to show healthy blood and then blood of the people that have been injected with the c jab and what that looks like and um what that means for the ones that haven't been injected, shedding, we can go into that after yeah. we've seen what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, that's can up. you see? Okay. Yeah. So this is um, my blood. And um, so these red blood cells and that are fairly, fairly healthy. There's maybe a little bit of liver stress going on. But see where there's some cells clumping together, sticking together, almost like yeah. they've got a bit of a magnet to them. Um, so that was, um, yeah, I, I had, I think I'd been, I oh, had a consult with someone who um, I felt unwell afterwards. I felt like my head was going to explode and just wasn't feeling very well and um I then, so really they should be all separate yes like this okay. one this oh hang on now why is that going up there yes yeah, so this so I actually I don't know if you can tell the difference between this one and the last one but the cells are much more um less clumping what I'd done was I had done some nebulizing of hydrogen peroxide that was the uh, this was very early on and I was um probably the most immediate thing I could think of to to help neutralize any effects um so I just did a, a few uh, three or to five minute nebulizing of hydrogen peroxide and it did um Can we do that yeah you got that handy yeah 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 and it just it helped me feel better but it also I thought oh I'm just going to check the blood and see what happens before and after and um it it did make a difference although you can see these uh, can you see my cursor moving nope no. there's a there's a cell there's a couple of cells on their own that actually look multicolored 
like a almost like a rainbow type color to them. They're they're cells that are sort of indicating some liver stress. I'll stop my screen share for a minute. And are you back to me again? Yep. This one. Okay. So now, so I apologize for the quality of this photo. I was having um, issues with my computer at um, at one point and um, the photos weren't coming out very well. I ended up having to buy a new computer. Um, but this, again, I wish. So all the little round circles with white centres are our red blood cells. And this particular person had had been coming to me prior to being mandated. Um, she had quite a severe autoimmune disease already. So she had she had comorbidities, as they say, or um, uh, pre-existing conditions. And we had actually been making quite good progress. She was feeling a lot better. So um, her red blood cells um, actually look better than what they did before. But there's this strange long pencil-like um, structure in the moving there and it's got a point at the top um, and then it just is, gets bigger and bigger and that is the unusual thing that um, I started to see. So this was, I think I did this one in December 2021, so... <clears throat> It was the early part of uh, me seeing these things and absolutely not knowing what they are. And these shiny green dots, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they are. Someone oh, has, You've someone never seen has, them before? No. Someone postulated to me that it was potentially the nanobots that everyone talks about um, that are in, in there. I, I is that the NRMA, NRMA technology? Um, I, I presume so. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or they, 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 you know, that they say that they've got these nanobots that once they turn the five G on, yeah, it yeah. actually activates a lot of things in their body. I can't be sure. I, I literally am still in a state of um, saying I really don't know how to describe this. So this is. Um, that same woman's blood, is the, <clears throat> and I only took two pictures, but this structure with all these little strange circles accumulating around along the edge of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was quite long in, in her blood. And you've got to remember this is one drop of blood. So this has been magnified about 40,000 times and... If you look at the size of a red blood cell compared to the size of this structure, it's quite large. Okay. In comparison. So the the clumping is a different. Do you think that's because all everything's clumped there and magnetic, which a healthy person it's um, free forming. So is it the clumping um, that's the issue as well, or? Really, the the main concern for you is seeing these black, long, yeah. whatever I don't know what to call them. Um, yeah, I've started actually calling them uh, hydrogel structures, which is a okay. term I heard. There's a doctor overseas called Anna Mahalche, um, who has done a lot of research with this, and she refers to them as self replicating hydrogel structures. Okay. Um, because and they do, I can show some slides a little bit later where you can actually see they're self-replicating, they're growing. Um wow. and um yeah, it's okay. um yeah, it's it's bizarre. Mm -hmm. So oh, these wow. are yeah, so I'm just gonna go back and explain. So there are two different types of settings on a computer. So this one, even though the the photography is not very clear it's in phase contrast this is in dark field so it's just a different setting and it gives us a different 
way to look at the blood. Yeah. Um, so when I put the microscope into dark field, this is what I see. Um, and this is recent. This was last week. This was in a young woman, um, I think, who has had three. Um, and so the, see how the, this, the red blood cells are all stacking on top of each other. They look like a stack of coins. Mm. That's not unique to this. That is something that happens in the body when there is stress and there is dysbiosis or imbalance. So it's not, it, that's not a phenomenon that's unique. It's mm -hmm. something, a normal part of life, blood microscopy assessment. But when the body's stressed, you're going to see that. What this um, structure looks like in dark field, though, it has that glowing, it's not a natural, it's it's not a natural um, glow. And I did. And that's different. Is that, that's different um, to what we just saw in the last slide, Kathy? Like that little no, bit of hydrogen? It's, it's the same thing, just in a okay. different, like as okay. if you're taking a colour photo and a black and white photo. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, I was like, is it heavy metal? It, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, again, this is the same one. I've taken it back into phase contrast again. So it's just it's a, it's a different light shining on the, on the glass slide. Um, so all her cells were clumping together. The black, uh, the black sort of strange looking clumps are macrophages, which are a normal part of the immune system, but her macrophage activity is very active. So her immune system is very active. And there are also lots of black spikes in the plasma or the clear part of the, the blood. Okay. But, but again, this, this was phenomenal. I took a photo. I, I, I think I took, it took me about 20 photos to. It was so long. It was so long. And, and I'll walk you through all of that. So it started with that tiny blunt end that we saw in dark field, but yeah. then um, it went. And, and this is in your, in your career, you've never seen this before in all your blood. And yeah. Never. Okay. Okay. Never, never, never. Wow. Um and yeah, so and again, like you saw what a healthy blood slide looked like at the beginning, and then we're seeing all of this clumping, all of the macrophage activity, all of the black spikes, which indicate liver stress. Um, we're seeing so much in in this, and it's all sort of so it actually oh, another one. No, it's the same one. It's the same one, it, and and it'll become apparent as as I go through okay. the screen, because it had actually almost like a snake. It had gone curled around and done all of like it was bizarre, absolutely. Okay. You see what I mean? Like it's it's actually like a long piece of rope that has toiled around itself. Is this um, Kathy? Is this what like when I? read about this and learn about this it's um you know how it's attaching to our major organs and that's what's ca causing the heart problems the ovaries would it be this that's attaching to the organs or that's a different part of what's in it yeah I'm not sure because this is in the blood I'm I don't know if anyone or if you're familiar with and again you don't always know how authentic things are when you see them but there was uh, some videos circulating a while back of uh, funeral directors mm -hmm. showing showing some long protein type clotted structures that they were pulling out of people's arteries um, as they were, you know, when they went to do their, their preparations before a funeral. In my mind, that's what this is. It's okay. those structures that they, because that the way that they grow, the way that they snake and form their way through a blood vessel, um, yeah, it's just uh, this is perhaps this is what that is. It's it's, okay. those, it's so in that respect, it would be part of what's causing blockages and and clotting and stuff like that. Okay, so more of that side of it. This, yeah, okay, yeah, the clotting, the blockages, yeah. Well, even just the free for blood to get, say, in the pregnant women, the flowing of yeah. blood. So, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it and it just, you can see how it's sort of taken on its own little shape of snaking its way along. It's It looks massive. It Yeah, and again, if you, because you've got some red blood cells yeah. next to it and there's lots of black debris in, in, the, in the blood. It's not clean blood. Um, and it just kept going. And going. This woman's in her early 20s. Um, and I think there was, hopefully there's some. And then it just actually overlapped there. So there's actually two structures, one on top of it, the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. And there's some white blood cells one white blood cell in there and I haven't really been able to demonstrate what a white blood cell looks like properly but again on the underside of that photo there you can see some really unusual colored clumping of structures that don't look like red blood cells sticking together they just look like a lump of rock or dirt or something that's oh okay um but yeah I'm I'm not sure if that's heavy metal um which again you've never seen before? Not in that respect, no. No. Okay. You can see cholesterol crystals and you can see signs of uric acid and um, pesticides and herbicides and things like that sometimes in people's blood. But these these just look different to me and I've not really been able to. I don't want to make claim of something when I haven't you know, when it's not been scientifically validated or anything, but it's just unusual that we're seeing. I that. love this. Is, this is the real science, though, because you're asking questions. Is. You're, this is the real science, asking questions, showing it, say, admitting you don't know for sure, but you're asking questions and figuring it out. Like, this is the real science. It is. It is because it's like, why are we seeing this? Why all of a sudden? Is this present when it's like I haven't seen it before? Yeah. But up the top of this, and and I I think this is a good work because sometimes you know someone might say, oh, but that's just an air bubble. Sometimes you get air bubbles on the slide when you put the cover yeah. slip on top. But at the top of the photo, there is is what an air bubble is, and it looks very very different to the structure below. Yeah. So I would say structure in there too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and it just kept going. So this is the same drop of blood. And I and as I said, I think I took about 30, 20, somewhere between 20 and 30 photos of it. Um <sighs> let's skip through it real quick. Um and so this, these white above there on the top corner, there's some white little dots. Mm -hmm. That's actually candida or yeast buds. So this woman had, you know, there's multiple things now happening in in her body. She was you know, not feeling well. Yeah. Um, but you've at least seen those before. It's yes, the stuff absolutely. you've never seen before. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it just seemed like so this was is making her blood as you can see quite quite stressed um and it just keeps going quite fascinating i think the colors make it but in in uh on a not without the height that's all black is that what it looks like in its know. natural form in its natural form, I think it would look like that that um, illuminated iridescent, like what I first showed oh. when I did it in, in dark field. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Okay, that's it's in the natural. Yeah. That oh wow. So yeah, there's more candida and things happening in this slide. Um, So it just seems to keep growing and growing. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. There we come to the end of it. And you can almost see like it's got new growth happening at the end of it. It's self-replicating. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> spin, wow. Spin. No wonder when you started true. seeing this, you asked questions. <laughs> yeah. If you've never, in all your years of being a nurse and, you know, and then a naturopath, what, 40 years up, 40 plus yeah. years all up together. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. crazy. And this wasn't the only one in her blood. There was, I came across another one. I don't think I've shown that today, but there was, a, she had two on that particular day that I did her blood. And and again, we have, it was one drop of blood, one tiny drop off, off of the tip of your finger. We have seven litres of blood in our body. So that that goes through my head as like, what else is going on? Like how much of that, how much of this stuff is actually in the body? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so I think that was the start of the second one. So you can see how it's got sort of almost like it's the same person, second second structure that I saw in her blood. You can mm-hmm. see how it, it, rather than having that blunt end, it's actually got all these tentacles sort of um, uh, developing and growing in that in that way. So it's, yeah. <laughs> Looks like something out of a movie, Kathy. I've got to say. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a, I I actually for a long time, and probably from that first, you know, late twenty twenty one right through when I started seeing this, I did question my sanity. It's like, what? You know? <laughs> am I seeing things? Uh, am, am I just imagining this? Uh, am I misinterpreting something? What you know? What? What's going on? Is it me or or is it this real? And and what were the was there a commonality between the symptoms that they were coming in with with this um, or that varying? They were varying, and I think a lot of the variations depended on their on someone's pre existing health and pre existing conditions. Like okay. so, yeah, it was um um not one set thing that I was seeing. But they're coming in not real well. That's right. Yeah. 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 This person, um, I didn't. I don't think I've got any wrote notes. But um, this person had six jabs, but already had a pre-existing condition of, um no pituitary gland function his pituitary gland had been wiped out because of previous medical treatment so he already had an iatrogenic or a medically caused illness where his adrenal glands did not function because they destroyed his pituitary gland with medications and and drug treatment um and then he proceeded to have i think it was about six jabs so um, so even though he'd been damaged by the mainstream medicine previously, he continued to have faith and trust in them, which yeah, oh, yeah. The but... brainwashing is real. <clears throat> yeah, it was a Stockholm, so... Stock, it's almost a version of Stockholm syndrome yeah. where you just keep going to the mm. perpetrator that is harming you. Yeah, yeah. It it was, I, and I've seen a lot of that. I I I have to say I've seen a lot of that and mm-hmm. I question why they end up coming to a naturopath but I think it's because they're desperate because they really want to feel well and they don't know how and they're not getting the answers um yeah pure desperation the, yeah yeah oh, sorry so I just want to go back to this so in the center there amongst all of those stacked cells is a is a very inactive almost hibernating little uh, white blood cell. That's that's what that. And what does that mean? Like what should that be doing? Um, so his, the white blood cells often look a lot larger and um, better colour, I would have to say. So, okay. um, so his immune system, to me, that's his immune system not working. It's, it's gone into, into sleep mode. Okay. All right. um, and we've got to keep remembering that these cells, these blood cells aren't meant to be clumped together. That's exactly right. They're yeah. meant to be free-forming. Yeah. To be free-forming. 
So this is another phenomenon that I'm also seeing, not just those long hydrogel structures, but, um, and I think this is, so this was in this, this person that, uh, same as the previous slide that we just looked at, um, this I believe is some sort of heavy metal that I've never really um, seen before. I'm not sure if it's graphene. I'm not yeah. sure if it's something else. Which graphene oxide's meant to be in those jab in the jabs anyway, isn't it? Yes. Is yeah. that quite big for a heavy metal? Even when you've seen heavy metals in the past, are they kind of more speckles versus this looks like a massive clump? Have you seen a clump of any sort before? Only probably no. I've never seen anything this big before. Yeah. Okay. And again, if you compare it to the size of the red blood cells around it, it is and you, you so That's you it. Get, you, yeah. Um, we start to understand why we're having so many injuries and deaths and if this yeah. is going on in our bodies. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, now, this person, and this is just throwing something different in there completely again because it's I didn't want to sort of, yeah, I wanted to give a variation of what I'm seeing. This was or is the blood of a two-and-a-half-year-old boy. Oh, bless. Who had been vaccine injured, not from the C vaccine, but from normal childhood. Immunizations. Mm -hmm. um, and when his mum came to me, this little boy was having fevers of over 40 at least every three to four days and constantly sick, never well, um, ear infections, tonsillitis, like he was he was lifeless he was listless he was so sick the poor little man um and she felt absolutely devastated of course um she has another younger child who's been raised vaccine free and is I've never need to see that child so it's interesting isn't it um but the yeah so so I know a few instances yeah exactly um, in all my years as a naturopath, it's the the only the the vaccine free kids that you don't need to see. They're healthy. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah, we had a lot of work to do. And again, you can see there's some a, there's two white blood cells in here. One at the top, and one sort of in the centre of side a bit there. They're small. They're inactive. They're not really vibrant and doing a good job and then and what would be the what would be the ratio in a healthy um slide kathy with the red to white blood cells you always see a lot more red blood cells in a whole drop of blood we would probably want to see anywhere between 10 to 20 white blood cells overall so that's a sort of a good variation of normal okay. um I can't remember how many he had, but it wasn't many. Yeah, it was okay, below, yeah. below 10. And these aren't um, active, like a active white blood cell. What would that look like? Yes, I should have. I will I will find one in a sec. And that's okay. Um, I can we can I can add that over and put that yeah, in to send yeah. it to me. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be great. Um this was him four months later. So still not right. See how some of his his red blood cells have squiggly edges. They're not perfect round circles. Yeah. Um, so he still had a fair bit going on. But, but the he, clumps had it stopped clumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the plasma looks clear. He doesn't have all those black spikes in the plasma. And so he was well on the way to recovery after about four months. He still had some behavioural issues that mum was dealing with. But the fevers had stopped and have stopped. I haven't seen him now for, oh, probably three months, um, okay. which, which is good. Like we, The visits are extending out and he's he's a lot healthier now. So the remedies you've used for him have worked to detoxify the child immunisation yeah. Yeah. jabs. Yeah. 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 Which is quite, quite going... different to what, we're see what you're seeing compared to the, the C jab. The detoxification yeah. process is a it well, because it's unknown, yeah, different and yeah, yeah, and and I usually uh, children I usually use are mostly homeopathics. It's very difficult to get them to um, 
um, take herbs. They don't, <laughs> they don't like the taste of them. So I tend to use um, homeopathics a lot with um, with children and get really good results. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. So this one again, this was just the 17th, a couple of days ago. Oh, adult. Um, this one. Oh. adult woman uh, lost her job because of the mandates um, and has since gone back to work. But I, I put this in because she had recently um, flown to Melbourne, spent three days in a busy sports stadium watching, you know, full-on internet, like heavy sport um, games <clears throat> and then had to catch her plate. Her flight was cancelled to get home. So she had to use public transport. So she was on trains and buses and things to get home. So she literally had had a week being surrounded in quite heavily populated situation I guess but she herself is not injected with the she's CJ. not injected okay. no she lost her job for over 12 months mm -hmm. stood her ground wow. but Good she honest. still has this stuff in her blood big and I believe this is like a shedding yeah this um, is a shedding. yeah because previously she doesn't normally have blood that looks like this she came to yeah. me for her normal she comes three or four times a year for normal checkups I wonder uh, if this is the um because I I I feel like I've been shedded on I, through my bicom, they've seen prions in my lungs or prions in. Would this be a prion? Possibly. Again, I I really would love to be able to identify it properly. Yeah, to know what it is or if it was something yeah. else. Yeah. And yeah. I, so that's I I need to find a way to contact some of these other researchers who have been looking at um, at what this is because I I don't know how to put a name to it. Yeah, to a name to it. And what symptoms was she coming in with? What was her symptoms from being shut um, She just generally felt flat and fatigued and a mm -hmm. bit thick-headed. Um, yeah, that was mine. Yeah, just, yeah. just not herself. Well, um, one, one of my friends um, was shuttered on and she felt like she had Alzheimer's. Mm. She was, I could not hold a thought. I couldn't remember anything. Um, yeah. yeah. And that was just yeah. from shedding. So yeah. detoxifying that, which is obviously easier for us that haven't been. Um, yes, absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah, I believe the detox process for us when this, it, when we're shedded on like this is um much easier than because we don't have any mRNA technology taking it into our DNA like like the jab has done to people, but mm. we have some of the the after effects I'm sure happening, mm -hmm. but we can easily yeah. detoxify it. Detoxify, yeah, I've, yeah, I've lived that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been in Melbourne recently, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So this again, it's the same picture. That was in dark field. You can see how it glows and mm -hmm. red blood cells just look like mostly black circles clumping mm -hmm. there. But when I put it into what's called phase contrast, that's what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> it just looks muddy and dirty and, and yeah, awful. Um, oh, that one I will skip because I didn't completely edit the it's like a, a skeleton hand isn't it it looks like it's got it's it's got joints and knuckles and it's just phenomenal and again these extra little bits wow. at the end that seem like they're growing and and creating my tinglies are tingling yeah yeah it's pretty phenomenal oh um, no i can't yeah 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 um Oh, this woman is jab injured. Yeah, she was. She's had a long journey back, and she's actually her brain is. She still suffers. We've got a what's lot of. Her, what's her jab injury like? Is it speaking? <clears throat> is it specific, Is it something specific, or is it a little bit of everything? What's her injury? Yeah, so she initially came with severe, debilitating headaches, and just like. 
if her energy was like zero out of ten, sort of, she just could not put one foot in front of the other. She had someone drive her to the appointment. <laughs> um, and we initially had some really good response to initial uh, treatment to get her sort of her body working again, but she has continuously struggled. And her main symptom now is the the brain, the, the her brain can't work, her brain fog, her not being able to think and talk. And um yeah, so she's been to neurologist, she's been to cardiologist, she's been to Jerry. What are they saying? Nothing's wrong with her. I've heard that. Nothing just, is yeah. wrong. All of the all of the mainstream avenues of testing do not show anything. And they gaslight the patients. They it's gaslight the patients you and tell an them. You need an antidepressant. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. You must be all yeah. in your head. How mm. disgustingly do no harm they took the oath. Absolutely. <laughs> they're causing more harm. They've already harmed people yeah. out there and now they're gaslighting them. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrendous. Disgusting. So disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, uh, hang on, so what was the date of that other one? That was July last year, and this is May this year. So we're seeing some coming. improvement. Yeah. yeah. Great. Again, so still, we, like, we like the winds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still not perfect, but she is on, she is improving. Um. Oh, now, <clears throat> this one is a dog. A dog? A dog. A woman brought her dog to me because she was absolutely sure the dog had been shedded on. <laughs> and it looks like she's right. Yep, yep. She was like, he got, so, like, he was really quite unwell. Um, and I think I took a few, yeah, so just some unusual thing. And see how all the red blood cells are all knobbly, like spiky ball type. Yeah. To turn. That's extreme liver stress. So um, this dog was not well at all. And down the bottom is an air bubble. So it's sort of, so I'm trying to differentiate what happens between that other an one air bubble and what, what is not an air bubble. That other one was looking like it was enclosing, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, so this is, um, so it's not just people. No. Yeah. It's all living creatures that are being affected. That's that's him that's again. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, again, wow. I really just struggle to um, <clears throat> to explain it. This person came to me claiming to be passionately pro-vaccination and have a science background. She had had six injections, proud, very proud of it, but had been told by the blood bank, she had been a blood donor for 13 years, told by the blood bank that she could no longer donate blood because her blood was clotting before their eyes and they could do no, nothing with it. Were they giving any um, answers as to why that would be? They no. didn't even ask. They just said you're clotting, go away. Yep, yep, yep. Go and see your doctor immediately. You know, you need to, you need to go and, and see your doctor. We can't, we can't have you as a blood donor anymore. Doctor did all the normal usual tests, which came back. You're fine. Nothing wrong with you. So she somehow through so word of mouth. The medical industries aren't even talking. The blood sender is saying you can't calm your calling at an extreme rate. They're saying nothing's wrong with you. Like they're not even. Not even connecting. No. So she came to me and I saw a few, yeah, a few. She, she just. She wasn't feeling unwell. That was the surprising thing. She wasn't feeling unwell. She didn't. She wasn't necessarily symptomatic. Just perhaps flat and fatigued, run down. Um, 
but this was her blood. <laughs> so in the middle there are two white blood cells in the middle of all that clotting. Wow. Um, when they say her blood was clotting rapidly, it was clotting rapidly. Uh, yeah, because yeah, she said to me, oh, what's, why is it doing that? I said, well, that's the clotting. <laughs> what does clotting, extreme clotting at that rate, uh, what are some of the potential outcomes of that? Oh, stroke, heart attacks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just complete blockage of oxygen and blood flow through to various parts of your body. So, mm. yeah. Um, it's amazing how I'm with you, with the people that have had loads and is still they're still not seeing, they're not seeing symptoms even though this is what's going on in their body. It's, um, and yeah. I explained. So this woman claimed to have a science background um so i said to her scientifically we now know that the experimental <laughs> injections that they've been using over the last few years they now have data available and some of the data you can actually see on government websites if you go looking for it and it categorically proves that clotting is a side effect yeah. of these injections yeah. And I never, ever once used the, the word vaccine. I always call them injections because um, they're, they're not, yeah. And um, so I went although, to... Although maybe yeah. they are now because they changed the definition of a vaccine to suit what they just rolled out. But suit like, their agenda, yeah, yeah. And it, even like what you're saying, you saw it, you can find it on the government website. They're just not telling you because, like I said at the start of this, we don't want any more hesitancy so they're not going to share it they'll put a little bit of it there because they actually have to yeah but it's hidden and buried and it's hard to find i've gone looking for some stuff and it's like click 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 yeah. like 20 yeah. clicks later you have to go into the basement literally yep. to find it. Mm -hmm. yeah it is really yeah cloak and dagger type yeah. stuff um so yeah, there you know there were some uh, there were some parts of her blood that weren't too bad, but yeah, there was a lot that that um, that wasn't. This was her a month later, and there we go. We've got a nice healthy white blood cell sitting right in the center of there of that okay. um, of that drop. Um, so that was a month of. Wow, that's pretty good. But she came back to me a month later saying, I feel so much better. I'm, I'm, thank you. I'm really, really happy with, with how I'm improving. I'm, I'm booked in for number seven next week. What do you do? Yeah. Trust the science. That's what you do. There were no words coming out um, of my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, it's the level of um, cognitive dissonance is very, very high. Yeah. But even so, we were able to do some, I was able to improve things for her a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure that she'll continue to um, keep coming. This yeah. was another jab-injured person, had kidney damage from one injection. I feel like I've got to keep on showing. Um, sh I'll keep putting up healthy slides so people can see <laughs> the disparity between the two. Between the two, yeah. Because yeah, I think we forget, you know, yeah. at the start we saw some all this yeah. slides. So I'll, I'll keep throwing them up so people can yeah. see the disparity. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she had frank blood in her urine. Um, she was in a bad way. So that uh, what, was sorry, frank. Frank blood, so pure, like visible, visible blood in mm. in her urine. Okay. So that was that healthy. August, and then this was six months later. All right. So we're seeing you're seeing results. You're seeing yeah. improvements. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I actually haven't seen this person for probably close to twelve months now. Yeah. Okay. So she's she's much much improved, thankfully. Great. Um, this was a person who had been mandated um, against her will, fought for months and months and months not to, but ended up um, 
caving to the pressure but chose to do a whole load of intensive treatment before, during and after to minimise her side effects. So she had IV infusions uh, weekly. Like she spent a lot of money protecting herself and uh, like we did what we needed to do from my end and then she went off and did the IV infusions as well. So she she felt quite confident um, that she was doing okay, but this was her blood. Um, not every time. No, I, we didn't see it every time, but, yeah. Does that was, look like it's growing out to the side, up and yeah. out into yeah. the side? Yeah. You can, do, you can get a sense of how it's growing, can't growing. you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's self-replicating yeah. Pretty of it. And I'd I'd love to know what makes it do that. I really would. Oh <laughs> and this is we're probably close. This is the end. Um this was an elderly gentleman who had a pre-existing condition of kidney failure. And he was an Indian man who had come to Australia to visit his family. His son lived here or lives here. And um, so he was only here visiting but got stuck here and wasn't allowed to hop on a plane and go back to his home country unless he got jabbed. Um, and so we were not only dealing with the kidney failure, we were dealing with an injury as well. And I literally do not know how this man walked into my clinic room. He was so, so sick. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's again another one of those unexplainable. I don't know if it's what? graphene, I don't know what it is. You oh, could, wow. could almost, could almost, like a skeptic could say that's cholesterol, but I don't think it is because um, cholesterol what? What? has more yeah. of a crystalline type look about it. Um, yeah, because you've seen you've seen cholesterol, yeah. and it doesn't look like to your to your eye, to my it eye, <laughs> doesn't it doesn't look the same? No, no. So yeah, that was, and this was two months later, two three months later, we had him to this point. Okay. And that's the end. That's all I've got to share. Well, <laughs> wow, 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 wow. No wonder you went, got curious and started investigating. If you're seeing stuff like that that you've never seen before. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just I'll stop sharing if I can. Will it? Is that better? Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a mixture of things. There's a lot of, un for me, as I said, I don't know how to put words to it. I don't know what to what to do, but I know that it shouldn't be there. And I know that there's a direct correlation with what's been happening over the last four years. And I know that even in the last, I would say this year, maybe from late last year to this year, I'm seeing some of those self-replicating structures in non-jabbed people as well, which makes me, again, start wondering, A, is it just the shedding? B, whatever it is, are they are they throwing it at us in some other way, whether it be through the geoengineering chemtrails, through yeah. our water supply, um, through so food. many food, like I... Yeah, I just do. There's too many questions and not enough answers. I guess it's probably my concern. Yes, 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 a hundred percent. And just being able to see it visually, like that was huge for me when you first showed me. It was just like, wow, we finally get to see it visually. It just changes everything because a lot of us have been talking about it for a long time. Yeah. Um, and we didn't have anything to show people or to have that evidence, but now. To see it, it's like this was really what's going on in people's blood. Mm. That's yeah. not a, a a healthy 
being like we can't be having this in our blood no no it's not sustainable with health and wellness at all and it's and and i guess from this one of the main things that i i'm very much about natural health obviously and you know our food our lifestyle um Mm -hmm. keeps us well but i think at the moment we every single one of us regardless of how healthy our lifestyle is we need some form of antioxidant to help our body detoxify stuff that we're not even aware of yeah so what would you recommend when it comes to antioxidant i think there's so many the the beauty of natural medicine is there's no one answer there's no one drug as it were there are a whole raft of um different uh remedies the one that i have gravitated to and finding i started off with you know like the zelenko protocols that were actually the zinc the quercetin the nac yeah well all of that and vitamin d and i and i was seeing results although that the one that I showed you, the woman who had been mandated and did all the IV therapy and everything, that's the protocol we used for her was the Zelenko protocol. Mm-hmm. And we still saw um, some of the stuff in her blood. So what I have gravitated to is broccoli sprout powder in a highly, highly concentrated form. Um, and I hands down it's giving me the best results as far as helping people detoxify so i use that as as the base the foundation and then whatever else i don't have set protocols i've never worked like that um i always work to the individual and and what each individual person needs but if i use the broccoli the the concentrated broccoli sprout powder and then add a couple of things. I don't believe in long lists of supplements either. You know, if you treat yes. anything like two or three supplements, supplements should do the job. Um, yeah, so that whether it be the parasite or some other sort of cleansing that we need to do, um, I get results and, hope you know, tend to see improvements relatively quickly in the whole scheme of things so but yeah the the broccoli sprout powder is phenomenal wow okay and you're seeing a difference between people that are taking that but also cleaning up their lifestyle with you know clean fruit and veg like organic where they can you know toxins and chemicals that are in our products and things like that absolutely yeah absolutely it's that it, that that comes in um, as well, like educating people to rethink everything. And it's for most people, it's a it, it, it does their head in. It, it's like to have to completely change the whole way of thinking. You know, yeah. habits of going to the shop, what they're looking for. Um, I still have some people saying, "Oh, you know, I'm trying to avoid this," and send me photos of packaged processed food do the ingredients in this look okay oh, just yeah go and get a piece of fruit or a handful of nuts or like you don't you, need packaged food you don't exactly and you don't know, read the ingredients if you don't understand what the words say don't buy them like exactly. if they don't have really you obviously buy the real ingredients yes but if you're gonna buy a packet read the ingredients on the back and if they are not whole foods it's chemicals it's junk it is totally 100%. And even with those whole foods that are in there, they're probably still grown. Some, yeah, some are questionable as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But it's a step forward if you're on the path of detoxifying holistically, read the ingredients on your shampoo, conditioner, your beauty products. Just read the ingredients. If you don't know the words, yep. probably not right, or look them up. If it's a sequence of numbers and letters and, and words that you can't pronounce, then... Chemicals. It's made in a lab and you shouldn't touch it. Yeah. Numbers and, yeah, letters. I mean, n- numbers, numbers definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 212, 568, what is that? Yeah, yeah. You can't eat that. I don't want it in my skin. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. And, okay, so we've got the um, Brussels sprout powder 
we obviously want that with a really good quality. A lot of the brands out there at the moment have been overtaken or bought by the pharmaceutical companies. And so the quality yeah. that is made in these supplements are yeah. not a um, questionable. A questionable, Absolutely. yeah, what they're putting in there. And so would you yeah. have to find a a good brand. From a retail, like if you were to go into a health food store or somewhere, or I think I don't know. Nowadays, you can buy anything online. You could probably order it online. Um, so, Cell Logic is the is the a company in Queensland, um, run by naturopaths, and have maintained their integrity. <laughs> um, their their whole focus is food. Food is medicine, and things don't need to be complicated. Um, which is, yeah, very dear to my heart. So. They make a product called Enduracell, um, and I'm not advertising anything, but it is pure, high-concentrated broccoli sprout powder that works very well. Right. I have I have their more intensive practitioner sort of recommended product that, that's not available over the counter, but when people, when I'm talking to people that aren't close to me, you know, sometimes I have interstate clients ringing and stuff like that. That's what I, I say. Just go to the health food shop and and get this product and and take it religiously because it will be the most powerful antioxidant that you do take. So yeah. Well, and you're seeing the direct correlation between using that and seeing a de detoxification in the blood sl slides and cells. So yes. Yeah. This is the science, isn't it? You're trying, you're testing, you're following it up, doing befores, afters. This is this is we're yep. in it. We're yep. in it. Absolutely, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's there's other ways as well. So I'm, you know, currently doing a, a I won't call it a trial, a research project with a kinesiologist. She has a specific training that she has done that is a, like a neurological training to. Uh, undo the effects apparently of the the jab so we are actually doing research uh at the moment of before and after I'll, I'll take someone's blood she's going to do the the kinesiology balance on them and then we're going to check the blood straight after and see what what change happens so that that starts this weekend so I'm really excited to right. to to get started with that so that's again trying to find answers trying to find solutions I'm very much about solutions. So, yeah, I've, I've sort of focused a lot on the what the problems are here, but I really, really want to be able to find solutions for people and help us all get well again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we want a, a society, a human kind, human humanity of healthy whole humans. Yes, we're, you know, and because we're all working, to, you know, we're all together, living yep. together, and we want us all to be really healthy and living our best life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're so amazing, Kathy. Thank you so much for sharing that and for doing all the work you're doing. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I'm excited to see what happens and the progress. And we'll hopefully chat again when you do your next project. And yeah. that might yeah. be giving people, especially people out there that unknowingly took it um, or really didn't want to take it and a having those injuries and are looking for ways to heal. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can help those people. I hope so. I really do. It'd be, yeah. I'd, and I'd love to yeah, come back with some positive, some positive outcomes of, of some of the things I'm looking into. That'd be great. Yeah. But ultimately like you, you know, what you're all about, you're passionate about is that holistic health, natural food, natural remedies, we don't need heaps. We don't need any pharmaceuticals. They're not. They haven't helped. No. <laughs> they've had their heyday for a hundred years, and they've just made us sicker. Absolutely. So look at yeah. your lifestyle. You've actually got to actively participate in creating your own health. Yeah, yeah. We need to go back to basics. We need to remember the ancient traditional ways. That's the only path forward, I think. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, and we will chat again soon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.